Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Again, the breaking news is that Edward Snowden, the NSA whistleblower and leaker who has been holed up at the Russian airport in Moscow, has been granted temporary asylum in Russia and has left the airport. Um, we are talking about all that has been unleashed uh, since he revealed uh, what he knew about the NSA's ability to um, monitor, surveil Americans and people around the world. On Tuesday, uh, Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon said he has seen no evidence that NSA surveillance has stopped dozens of terrorist attacks. I have seen no evidence, none, that this dragnet phone records program has provided any actual unique value for the American people. In every instance in which the NSA has searched through these bulk phone records, it had enough evidence to get a court order for the information it was searching for. And getting a few hundred additional court orders every year would clearly not overwhelm the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. The intelligence agencies may argue that collecting Americans' phone records in bulk is more convenient than getting individual court orders, but convenience alone does not justify the massive intrusion on the privacy of ordinary Americans. I believe it's vitally important to protect the safety and the liberty of our people. I don't see any evidence that this program helps protect either. That ought to be the standard of any domestic surveillance uh, program. If the bulk collection program doesn't protect privacy or security, then it ought to end, plain and simple. The executive branch simply hasn't shown anything close to an adequate justification for this magnet, massive dragnet surveillance that has compromised the civil liberties of millions of Americans. That's Oregon Senator Ron Wyden on the floor of the Senate on Tuesday. Spencer Ackerman, what he's saying? Um, he's saying in really clear language, as clear as you can say uh, about secret programs in public, that as now Chris Inglis, the deputy director of the NSA, has confirmed, that the NSA's bulk phone records collection of Americans does not, has not stopped terrorist attacks, as the NSA has repeatedly claimed. And he's saying also that there could be pretty easy safeguards that basically just make the NSA's uh, Telephony metadata collection just work as the Patriot Act's plain language say it has to work with some reasonable suspicion, individual suspicion, of connection to terrorism and espionage before you go and get a subpoena or a warrant for it. I want to tell one quick anecdote that I think sort of uh, helps put this all in perspective, particularly with Wyden. In 2011, I was working for Wired magazine, and I got a call from Wyden's office saying he wanted to talk to me uh, ahead of uh, the, the vote on the Patriot Act. Wyden called me in his office. We talked, and he said that, in secret, the executive branch was interpreting the Patriot Act in a way that, if the public knew about it, would astonish it, that the, the collection that it believed it had the power to perform uh, amounted to essentially a revision of the Patriot Act entirely in secret. And I asked Wyden, what do you mean by that? What's actually happening? And he said he couldn't at all tell me any detail at all, because all of it is classified. Even the interpretation of the law in secret is classified. And he had fought a battle to even say publicly that such a thing had even happened. And for two years, Wyden had sort of coughed and hinted and, and nudged people to pay attention in some way to the fact that this was even happening. He gave it the term secret law. I had been covering this for the past two years. And I had no idea what Wyden actually meant, until Edward Snowden disclosed to my newspaper this overwhelming bulk collection. Ron Wyden was entirely vindicated, and it sort of underscores that when Wyden says to his colleagues, hey, maybe look in secret about the discrepancy between what the NSA is saying uh, its violations have been, meaning accidental, and what it actually said to us in secret, maybe that kind of should get some more uh, attention. Maybe more senators should b go back in the closed session, he's saying, and look at that, because Wyden's track record really does bear out here. And it also point points out, now that Chris Inglis has said it in public, that if Wyden is saying the bulk phone records collection hasn't actually stopped terrorist attacks, well, Wyden's track record of describing this stuff vaguely in public is pretty good. During Wednesday's Senate Judiciary hearing on the NSA's collection of bulk phone records, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, who chairs the Intelligence Committee, 
defended the program. I was on the Intelligence Committee before 9-11, and I remember how little information we have and the great criticism of the government because of these stovepipes, the inability to share intelligence, the inability to collect intelligence. We had no program that could have possibly caught two people in San Diego before the event took place. Um, I support this program. I think, based on what I know, uh, they will come after us. And I think we need to prevent an attack wherever we can from happening. James Bamford, Senator Dianne Feinstein is certainly in a very different place than these other senators that we've heard from Republican and Democrat. Well, sure. And, uh, you know, she brings up 9-11. You know, the U.S. government had all the information it needed to prevent 9-11. It didn't need all these bulk uh, data collections and everything else. All it needed to do was have the CIA tell the FBI or the State Department that these two people were coming to the United States, Cleetal Midar and Nawaf al-Hazmi. Um, because they knew it. They knew it because they had copies of their visas that had been sent to them. And they knew that they were coming to the United States. The problem here wasn't collecting information. The problem was distributing information. So justifying all this based on 9-11 is just total nonsense. Can it also and, get in the know, way of national talking... security, Jim Bamford? Can it also—they are so yeah. inundated in information, they can't make sense of any of it. Well, that's the point. You know, we've had this going on for seven years, uh, this this internal uh, domestic metadata telephone collection, and up until 2011, the email uh, collection also. And yet, we've had, uh, after 9-11, we had the— uh, uh, we had the underwear bomber, the uh, person that was flying to Detroit that was going to blow up a plane uh, Christmas Day, uh, the Times Square bomber, uh, the, the two people in uh, Boston that just uh, uh, committed the bombing on, uh, on uh, uh, the uh, uh, Marathon Day and so forth. Now, all those people were communicating internationally, basically. They were all communicating either to Chechnya or the, uh, the Times Square bomber was communicating to Pakistan. And the uh, underwear bomber was uh, in Yemen and communicating with uh, 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 other countries in the Middle East and also to uh, uh, Nigeria, for example. So if the NSA had been taking all its attention and paying attention to foreign communications, international communications, instead of domestic communications, it might have discovered those. But to have a track record where, where you're not able to discover those because you've got too much electronic hay on the electronic haystack and impossible to find that little needle. Does the FBI— um, That's the, what these hearings are, 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 are good for. Does the FBI— Does the FBI, local police, do they have access to this information from the NSA as well? Are they all sharing? Um, the FBI is one of the principal recipients, I think, of a lot of this information. Um, the other thing that this uh, this one of the things that I think uh, should worry a lot of people is that it's not just the the U.S. that gets this information. The uh, the British, the Australians, the New Zealanders, and the uh, Canadians all have access to the same information, and they distribute it within their own government uh, law enforcement organizations. So. Um, this bulk data collection is bulk data collection for not just the United hmm. States, but for, for all these other countries around the world. James Manfred, I want to read a quote about the NSA and its domestic surveillance apparatus that you use at the end of your piece in the New York Review of Books. It's from late Senator Frank Church, 1975. He said, quote, that capability at any time could be turned around on the American people, and no American would have any privacy left such as the capability to monitor everything. Telephone conversations, telegrams, it doesn't matter. There would be no place to hide. 
If this government ever became a tyranny, if a dictator ever took charge in this country, the technological capacity that the intelligence community has given the government could enable it to impose total tyranny, and there would be no way to fight back, because the most careful effort to combine together in resistance to the government, no matter how privately it was done, is within the reach of the government to know. Such is the capability of this technology. I don't want to see this country ever go across the bridge. I know the capacity that is there to make tyranny total in America, and we must see to it that this agency and all agencies that possess this technology operate within the law and under proper supervision so that we never cross over that abyss. That is the abyss from which there is no return. Those are the words of the late Senator Frank Church in 1975, who convened the Church Committee hearings to challenge this level of total surveillance. And that's the quote that Jim Bamford ends his piece with in the New York Review of Books. I want to thank you both for being with us for this hour. James Bamford, investigative reporter who's covered the National Security Agency for three decades, helped expose the NSA's existence in the 80s. His most recent book, The Shadow Factory, the ultra-secret NSA from 9-11 to the eavesdropping on America. His most recent piece in the New York Review of Books, They Know Much More Than You Think. And thanks so much to Spencer Ackerman, national security editor at The Guardian.